Hello and welcome to Tuesday Tips Live from Digital DJ Tips. I'm Phil Morse and I'm here today to help you become better DJs, better DJ producers. Now today we're doing something a little bit different because we're looking at a piece of software uh, and this piece of software is called Sound ID Reference. It's what I've got running on this laptop here. And this piece of software is a really clever little app that sits on your laptop as a system-wide extension and it improves the sound of your headphones. And this means that if you are producing music, making bootlegs or re-edits or remixes or even making your own tracks, or if you're just listening to music, to audition tracks to listen to in your DJ sets, you're gonna get better sound through your headphones. So why do you need this? Surely your headphones sound all right as they are. And if you do need this, and if this isn't snake oil, then how does it work? And is it really useful? to the likes of you and me, to DJs and DJ producers. Well, that's what we're gonna be talking about today on this episode of Tuesday Tips Live. So if you're new to this, this is a live show. You're watching a recording of a live show. It happens every Tuesday across the Digital DJ Tips channels, our YouTube, all our Facebook pages and groups, also our Twitch and over on Mixcloud. And it is designed to help you become a better DJ and better DJ producer. We're the biggest online DJ school in the world, the people behind Rock the Dance Floor, the Amazon best-selling book on how to DJ. And our mission is to help you improve as a DJ or DJ producer. And this is one of the free shows that we do every week, always at this time, 4 p.m. London, 11 a.m. Eastern. We have another show on Thursday, which is any questions. So if you've got a question that you want to ask me or the team that isn't about what we're talking about today, which once more is this uh, piece of software here, uh, which is called Sound ID Reference to make your headphones sound awesome when you're listening to or producing music. If it's not about that, you've got a question about something different, come back on Thursday and that's when we're here to answer absolutely anything. We hang around for an hour and we literally do answer every question that we get, that we can anyway, we never get through them all, but hey, we do our best. So that's us, that's what this is all about. So without further ado, let's get stuck in and let's talk about this piece of software I've got here. Now, if you've got a question about this, hashtag ask, hashtag A-S-K, hashtag ask, and I will prioritize those questions as I'm scanning through them on the uh, comments after we've had a, a little look through this piece of software. The comments are over there on my comment cam, as a lot of you that tune in regularly will know, and I will um, get to those questions afterwards. So, this piece of software, what's it for? How does it work? Is it worth having? What is it? Because it's a little bit different, a little bit strange compared to um, some of the stuff that, more obvious stuff we look at on this show. All right then, so the piece of software I have here is called Sound ID reference. Now it's running on this Mac. It also runs on your Windows computer. Uh, there is a version of their software you can get for iOS and for Android, but we're not talking about that now. We're talking about the, the version that runs on your laptop. Uh, and it sits between the audio output of the laptop, inside the laptop, it sits between the audio output and your headphones. So in other words, it hijacks the audio. So the audio is about to go to your headphones and it says, nope, I'm having that first. It feeds it into this piece of software here and that's what the software looks like. And then it feeds it out to your headphones. So it makes itself sit between what would normally be coming out of your MacBook and the headphones. Now, it can also work on any audio interface you've got plugged in if you use an audio interface. It can actually also work on a DJ controller, but not much point in doing that really, but just to let you know, we did test that. So that's what it does. It sits between the output of your door if you're using Ableton or just if you're using like I used it when I was auditioning uh, tunes on Tidal for my next DJ live stream. It sits between the output of whatever you're using on your computer and your headphones and it improves the sound that's coming out of your headphones. So how does it do that? Why does it do that? Well it doesn't just like use snake oil. There's, there's, some, there's some absolute solid science going on here and there's a reason for this. So here's the reason. Every pair of headphones out there, whether you use Pioneer DJ headphones, these are Audio-Technica uh, headphones that I've got here, which are a classic DJ headphone that also uh, can be used for producing music. Uh, but whatever your headphones, whatever headphones you've got for your DJing, for your production, they're gonna have a color to their audio. Their audio isn't gonna be a flat frequency response because the headphone manufacturers sometimes give you a boost in the bass and a little dip in the treble and a little boost in the uh, sorry, a little dip in the mid, a little boost in the treble, that kind of smile curve 
named after a smile if you look at it on a frequency chart. Uh, and it might be different to that, might have a little boost in other areas, but it's very rare that you get a pair of headphones, even if they say, you know, these are flat headphones, they actually are. And especially if you're using headphones that are not expensive and made for producing, they're gonna have a color to the sound. And that can be bad news when you're listening to music, or even worse, when you're trying to produce music. Why? Because when you're listening to something you're producing on your headphones, you wanna hear that music how it really is. You wanna know that you're hearing everything in balance and you wanna know that this is how, you know, the average person out there is gonna hear it when they listen to it on their system. So as a producer, we're always looking for calibrated sound. We're always looking to know that the sound we're hearing is as true as possible, which means it's got flat frequency, all the way from the bass frequencies all the way up to the highest frequencies. It's as flat as possible. Now that's never 100% possible, but that's what we want. Now, studios calibrate their speakers, but we're talking today about calibrating headphones only. So that's something we're looking for. And the problem is that, as I say, most headphones aren't very good at that. They sound great. They sound great if you listen to them for hours. They sound wonderful. They're good for DJing and stuff, but not always quite so good for producing. Or if you just want to hear that music like it was damn well made. So what can we do about this? Well, that's what this piece of software is designed to do. This software kind of hijacks the audio, like I said, and then applies a frequency curve, like a really posh graphic equalizer, that is the mirror image of the frequency curve of your headphones. So firstly, let's have a look at what that looks like. So on this graph here, this is the actual software itself. I can select the frequency curve of the headphones we're looking at here. And if you look on the middle of the screen now, let's turn off what it does to them. So this is the frequency curve you're looking at now on the screen of these headphones. And you can see on the left-hand side, there's a boost. These are the base frequencies on the left. In the mid-range, there's a dip, two dips really. And then there's another boost in the treble. And the two lines are the left and right-hand ear cups on the headphones. So that is the frequency response of this particular pair of headphones. Whoa, hang on a second. How the hell does it know that? The way it knows that is that these headphones were actually calibrated by the company that makes this software individually. That's why it's got a slightly different curve for the left and right hand earpieces there. And so that is the actual calibration for this pair of headphones that I'm holding in my hand here, which is pretty cool. And the way you get this for your headphones is by sending your headphones off to the company. They will put them on their, you know, their, um, their, their pretend head that's got the microphones in it and stuff. And it will, it will listen to them through all the frequencies and produce this for you. And the headphones themselves, if you look on my desk here, where they're plugged in, I've got this little tag here. And this tag has got a number on it. AB344G, it says on there. And actually the tag is also here. You probably just see a little bit of white there on a sticker there. So these headphones have come back from the company calibrated and that's how the software knows that that curve that you're looking at there is the exact curve that represents what these headphones actually sound like. So look what happens when I turn the software on. When I turn the software on it applies this curve, the one that you can now see in green on the graph. And you'll notice that it's an absolute mirror image of the other one. So in other words, it cancels the other one out. So what we actually hear in our headphones is this flat line you can see through the middle with all those frequency bumps and dips hopefully cancelled out. And so the audio you're getting through the headphones is much, much flatter and much truer to the music you're producing or listening to. And I have to tell you, this is absolutely incredible. It really is incredible. It's like listening to two individual tracks, two different tracks when you turn it on and off. There's a little button in the bottom corner of the software there where you can turn this on and off. Uh, it's incredible, it really is. And I've been listening to music all week on it uh, and it just, when you turn back to what the headphones should sound like, you don't wanna be there. It's really, really cool what this does. Now you might be saying, well, hang on a second, I'm not gonna be sending my headphones off to any company to be calibrated. Fear not, because have another look at the software here. In the drop down here, you can select your headphones. And in fact, there is a whole bunch of headphones already analyzed here down the left-hand side. So for instance, if I've got Pioneer DJ headphones, I can go in there and I can select my Pioneer DJ headphones. It shows you a picture of them and then it applies the characteristics, average characteristics of those headphones to your audio. Now, 
I could have done these for the, could have done that for the headphones I've got here. These Audio Technica headphones I've got here, they've got a curve here as well. And the interesting thing was when I applied that curve, it was slightly different to this one here that we're looking at on the main screen because it turns out that individual headphones, even the same brand and the same model, have got slightly different characteristics. And we could see that because the left and the right cups on these were slightly different, just manufacturing differences and tolerances and so on. So, you know, it's a bit like when you buy in-ear um, monitors or musicians earplugs you can either get them custom made to your ears or you can get some that are pretty good that are standard you know you can apply the standard curve if you like here and it'll sound pretty good or you can send your headphones off and get them calibrated and it'll sound absolutely brilliant it'll get it perfect for those headphones either way it's an awful lot better than just plugging your headphones in and listening to it so that's the first thing this software does, give you that flat frequency response, which is great if you're making bootlegs, mashups, re-edits. It's great if you're just listening to music and you want to hear it properly. As I said, I'm kind of addicted to it. You wouldn't want to apply it to your headphones when DJing, even if technically you could. You know, you're not worried about frequency responses and true flat curves and stuff then, but it's really, really nice to have on your laptop going across the full output. By the way, you can also put it across, you can also use it as a plug-in in like Ableton and stuff, uh, but I've just got it applied across the whole output here on the computer. And actually, uh, you can choose where it's applied down here. So I could add a new output here. So I've got external headphones, speakers, and I've got all the other things I've got working on this Mac here as well. Uh, so if you've got audio interfaces plugged in, then you can easily kind of dial those in. But there's another big thing it does, which kind of makes it a no-brainer, especially if you're a producer. So what it's got on it is a set of presets based around places where your audience might listen to your music, your listeners of your tracks might listen to your music. So down here at the bottom, uh, we've got these presets. So these presets are things like car. So we've got three types of car, you know, small car, average car, and posh car, if you like. Uh, we've got lots of types of in-ear headphones. Uh, we've got laptops. You can just make it sound like uh, laptop speakers. Uh, you can make it sound like over-ear or on-ear headphones. Make it sound like a smartphone, which doesn't sound very good, obviously. Studio speakers, even different types of TV speakers. So what this does is feed through your headphones what your track you're producing would sound like on all those different types of device. So in other words, you don't have to go off and play your mix on a car system to hear what it would sound like on a car. You don't have to download it to your phone and play it on your phone to hear what it would sound like on a phone or a laptop. You can do that all through your headphones. So if you're a producer, you're making your own edits or whatever, that's really good because it first it flattens out the frequencies on your headphones so you know your headphones are giving you truth and then it can apply all these presets or translations as I call them to give you all these different types of sound on your headphones. Now in short I think this is wonderful this costs $99 this software just for your headphones. You can get it to calibrate your studio speakers as well and they send you a microphone that you use to kind of hold up and and it'll listen to your speakers but I've only tested the headphone version here. I think it's brilliant, I love it. I'm gonna leave it on my computer forever, for sure. But the, uh, the thing that is worth saying is that you're gonna get the best results if you send your headphones off to them. Um, now, I'm gonna tell you a little story about Laidback Luke. Laidback Luke, as some of you will know, is our tutor, our production tutor, who's made our course on bootlegs, mashups, and re-edits. He's also a prolific producer and DJ, of course, outside of being a teacher. And our Luke, produces music on his laptop, like on a pair of Beats wired earbuds. Beats wired earbuds, just, just really basic earbuds. And he sits there on a plane with all that background noise going on, producing music. And I said to him once, Luke, how can you do that? Surely, surely you need like noise cancelling and you need something like I've just described to make the frequencies all flat. And you need, you know, how can you make music that where the final mix sounds so good on just a laptop? And he said, well, there's two ways, really. He said, the first thing I always do is compare the music when I finish the mix to a track I know sounds good on my headphones. So Luke will get a track either that he's made or that is in a style he's trying to make, and he'll listen to that track and he'll see if it sounds good, and he'll flip between that one and the mix he's making and adjust the outputs accordingly. But Luke also said, look, the reason I can produce on really crappy earphones on a plane um, is that I'm a producer that's been doing this for many decades and I can look at all the elements in the mix and how I've EQ'd them and I can hear on my head, I know what my earphones sound like and by combining all that and all that experience, I know what my mix will sound like on a big sound system and on everything else in a car or whatever. 
But that is something that you learn intuitively from decades of producing. And if, if you're not used to working that way, your mixes are prob probably going to sound terrible if you do. So Luke's advice is, you know, a bit like Warren Buffett's investment advice. You know, Warren Buffett is a great value investor and he knows all about the stock market and how to value companies and stuff. But he says, everyone else, just, just buy a cheap fund and, and, and let someone else take care of it for you. Don't try and do what I do. And that's Luke's exact philosophy. Luke's exact philosophy is don't try and do what I do. You know, you really do want to get really true sound and be very, very careful when you're mixing to make sure your audio sounds good. Uh, at the very least, compare it to something else uh, on, you know, something like the system we've just looked at here or very, very good headphones or good speakers. But at best, use something like this software here uh, to know that your mix is going to sound good uh, on all these different things that are offered here, uh, as well as uh, when you've got the frequency set flat. Uh, and this software is designed for that. Now for DJs, it's a nice to have. You know, you wouldn't use this in your DJing, as I said, but I I'm definitely loving using it in auditioning music and planning DJ sets, because the music just sounds better, frankly. But for producers, if you're a DJ producer, remixes, bootlegs, mashups, uh, even if you're starting to make your own music, then it's definitely worth thinking about having this piece of software. You'll buy it once and you'll use it for like the rest of your production career. Uh, it's the Sound ID reference software from Sonarworks, and that is our talk through of what it does and what it is. Um, I'm quite impressed with it, but now I want to see what you've got to say about it. So for the rest of this live show, and if you're watching the recording, you should have been with us live because you could have asked a question now about this. Uh, just make sure you subscribe. And then next time, you'll be able to ask a question live because we'll inform you when we go live. Uh, but for everyone who's watching this uh, on the replay, just ask questions underneath. My team will get to you there. Uh, but for everyone who's watching it live and who's intrigued or interested in this software, well, let's go over to the comment cam uh, and let's chat about this together for the rest of our live show today. So welcome everyone, awesome. Uh, it's, uh, oh, I enjoyed that, it's been a lot of fun doing something a bit different today, but now it's over to you. Uh, so um, uh, I'm gonna just jump to questions today. Uh, we're gonna try and, uh, try and tighten up the Tuesday Tips Live and do all the, all the hellos and all the interactive stuff with our audience, do, let's save that for Thursday. Uh, so I'm just looking for the hashtag ask questions here today, uh, and that's what I'm gonna be spending the rest of our time together. Uh, talking about. Uh, so Mixmaster G's got a good one. Uh, says, what is the effect of this on latency? Uh, that's a really good question. So the latency uh, is about 70 milliseconds. Uh, pretty unnoticeable, to be honest. Um, obviously, this isn't a DJ uh, tool, and I found it fine. There are actually three different settings that you've got that you can use to alter uh, the the performance versus quality ratio. So if you want a bit less latency or a bit more, uh, you can do that and have a trade-off between performance and uh, and quality of audio. Uh, but in, in truth, there wasn't any effect at all on the latency. I found it, uh, I found it to be fine. Uh, so that's not something that was an issue. Uh, Stuart says, very interesting topic today. Thanks, Stuart in TDOT. Um, so, um, I'm just looking for questions on this. There doesn't seem to be that many. So you've obviously, I've obviously done a very, very good job of explaining this uh, to you. A lot of you are just loving the topics, which is great. That's what we're here for. Uh, DJ Ginormous uh, is enjoying this as well. Um, Darren says, this is good to know, Phil. It's a much more cost-effective option than expensive studio monitors. It is, and you know, the more you think about it, if audio is important to you, then you want to hear it, how it really is. Because the trouble is a lot of consumer audio devices are deliberately tuned to make you feel good. And that generally means boosting the bass and the treble and dropping the mid-range. So they just feel comforting and nice and it's a bit like food with sugar in it. And that's great for everyone else. But for those of us who rely on either if you're a cook tasting that food properly without the overwhelming sweetness, or if you're a DJ hearing every frequency and figuring out what is in that track and how it all works, then you want to trade off some of that warm fuzziness for the truth, right? Uh, and that is what this software is giving you. It's giving you the truth. Um, so yeah, Darren, it's a much more cost-effective option than expensive studio monitors. Uh, and as I said, there is also a speaker 
version of this. So you can get a little microphone. If anyone's ever used, like Sonos does this, Sonos has got something called um, True Tone, I think it's called True Tone, where it hijacks the microphone in your phone. And on the Sonos app, you wave your phone around like an idiot in your room and the speaker plays all these weird tones and it tunes your room and the speaker so that you get better audio quality. It's a bit like that. Um, they send you a microphone and you plug it in and you do all this stuff and it figures out um, how your, your studio speakers sound in your particular room and it applies the same kind of curve to that. Uh, but we haven't reviewed that. Maybe we will if there's enough interest in it. Um, Robert says this seems absolutely brilliant. Um, Craig, it's cooking dinner so you missed the start. But listen, anyone who missed the start, you can watch the replay of this. Uh, you just have to head over to our YouTube or Facebook pages uh, and watch it from the beginning uh, to, to see the replay of this. And we will still answer your questions. So if you've got any questions, uh, just ask them underneath in the comments and we will get to them. Um, Ingi says, I, I've not got a question, but it's useful to know about this. Thank you. Uh, some DJ dude says, how does it manage the gain in and volume out? That's a really good uh, question. Let's go and have a look at how it does that. So what you have is the, if you look on the far right hand side, I've got this uh, volume here. Now the gain in is a good question. I don't think the gain in really matters. Uh, the gain in just seems to be fine to me, uh, but the out is handled from here. You can probably handle the gain in by heading over to your um, to your audio settings and going to your sound preferences. In fact, of course you can, uh, and uh, messing, messing around there with input, I think anyway. Uh, or of course, if you're using like Spotify or, or, or Ableton, then the gain in is gonna be the gain out from those things. Uh, but that's how it, handle it handles it. You get two meters here, uh, which in fact, let me just try and show you some audio. Let's just head over to Spotify uh, and I'll, um, let's just get something playing here on Spotify. Now we don't want a podcast. Podcast isn't what we want, is it? Uh, let's get a track playing on Spotify. You won't hear this because it's playing through these headphones I've got here, uh, but I can show you some audio playing here if I get something playing there. He said, uh, and then suddenly there's no audio playing there. Uh, so I'm not sure why I've not actually set this up on this computer to play from Spotify at the moment. That would normally come through here and the meters would show. Uh, but anyway, that's how it works. Uh, so yeah, you can adjust it that way. Um, there's also an, uh, an overhead thing which will stop you pushing the gain too high and therefore clipping the sound, which obviously defeats the object. You don't want clipping sound going on there. Uh, so uh, Sapio says, uh, apply to any output so I could get my Samson resolves to sound like function ones. Uh, lol if only. This is actually a really good point, Sapio. So this isn't going to fix everything. If you've got poor speakers, it will attempt to give you a flat frequency curve or in this case headphones. But you know, it's not, it's not a miracle worker. Uh, it's gonna work better with proper headphones that cover your ears and give you decent isolation and so on. If you're using earbuds, you know, it depends how far you've gotten pushed in to what they sound like and stuff. So there's a limit to what this can do. Um, so Dave says, there's not a lot to ask really, Phil. You really did answer it all. Cool, well, that's, uh, that is, um, that's what we're here for. Um, I'll be getting this for sure, says Dave. Awesome, that's good. Uh, so Carlos says, can you make an updated video on how to use Mixmeister? Uh, maybe we will soon, Carlos. Uh, and you cheekily hijacked my ask tag there to ask something that wasn't to do with this topic. But hey, uh, we're all friends here, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, Dr. Karen, does this software come with some presets for headphones that are industry standards? Or is it mandatory to send your headphones before you're able to use the software? So great question, Karen. Uh, and again, if you missed it, uh, you've got lots and lots of different choices in here already for headphones. So you head here to the top and you head to uh, add a new headphone profile. Uh, at the bottom here, you can click individual calibration and you can put in the number that's on the headphones. If you remember, the headphones come with a number written on them. Uh, it's written here on these ones. You probably can't see that. I'm trying to show you there. Uh, but also it is uh, on a little tab here, uh, a little number. Uh, so the number will be on the headphones that you've either bought from them or had calibrated by them. Uh, and then you enter that in here, where it's got the individual calibration ID, but uh, you can also select your brand. So if you've got a pair of, uh, I was looking at the Pioneer ones earlier, you've got a pair of Pioneer DJ HDX7s, it will check that they're the right ones and you just click OK and it'll apply a curve that is the average curve for those headphones. So Karen, you don't have to worry about uh, getting them calibrated if you don't want to. And you know, if you end up getting addicted to it, you'll probably like end up sending your headphones off to get them calibrated anyway. Uh, how long do they have your headphones for when you send them off? That is a good question and I don't have the answer to that. I'm sure if you head over to their website, you can tell me. And the other thing I don't have the answer to is uh, 
how, how much that costs. So I should have checked that out really before going live, but hey, no one's perfect. Um, so I'm just gonna check if we've got one or two more extra questions here about this that I haven't managed to get to. Oh, don't worry, Carlos, I was only teasing. Uh, it's absolutely fine, but just come back on Sunday, uh, sorry, on uh, Thursday uh, with any other questions. Uh, Colin says there's no substitute for a decent sound system. Manufacturers often use clever electronics to make a system sound better, but somehow to me, uh, they are a giveaway because of the false sound. Well, yeah, I mean, we were just talking about that, weren't we, Colin? Uh, but I'll tell you, um, this uh, flattening of the frequency on consumer headphones sounds really, really good. I'd, I'd, I'd recommend you have a go because you can download a 21-day trial of this. It costs $99, but you can download, download a 21-day trial uh, from the website. Uh, let me show you the website, actually, so that you... Um, so that you can uh, have a look for yourself. Uh, so I'm just uh, dialing it up now, and getting it on the screen for you. Uh, it is uh, this one here, Sound uh, Sonarworks. So head to Sonarworks for creators, uh, and then go to download, download free trial, and you can get a free trial of this software here. Uh, so you can have a go, and you can dial in your headphones. You don't have to send them off, as we're talking about. You can just dial in uh, the 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 average rating for the headphones and give it a listen see what you think um, and make your own mind up that way um, so uh, I think we're probably done here for today folks I think I've uh, I think I've covered most of what people were asking uh, and uh, I'm really pleased to have brought this to you so I hope you enjoy this new format we're not going to be calling people out so much on a uh, Tuesday because I want these videos to stay on the, stay evergreen on the internet and become useful for people just stumbling over them and wanting to know about the topic without having to listen through us lot chatting to each other. So um, for all regulars, you know, you get it. Just come back on Thursday. We'll have a proper chat and a hangout together then. Uh, and that's more of, that's going to be more of our interactive show. So um, we're done for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found this useful. If you've got any questions, wherever you are watching a replay of this, ask them underneath and we'll get to you. And if you want to tune in next Tuesday, we'll have another topic like this. As I say, if you've got any other questions about anything else in your DJing, come back on Thursday and we'll be helping you with absolutely everything you throw at me then. That's not rehearsed, that's just off the cuff giving you as much value as I can for an hour on a Thursday. But meanwhile, from uh, Digital DJ Tips here on Tuesday Tips, it's me, Phil Morse, uh, signing off. This has been our look at the software that we've been looking at today, uh, which is this piece of software here that will allow you to tune your audio in order to listen to a flat frequency response on pretty much any half-decent headphones. It's Sound ID reference from Sonarworks, and it's been the title of our Tuesday Tips Live today. Thank you for tuning in. Now get good, get out there, make the moments, and I'll see you next time. Until then, bye-bye.